G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's clip we'll be running through three different methods to start off your plants for the aquaponics. That's using seeds, transplanting in seedlings and cloning and I'll also give you a couple of other tips and pointers along the way. So I'll stop nattering on, we'll flip the cameras around on the phone and we'll get stuck into the clip. So to begin with I thought I'd show you the easiest way to start off your seeds and that is by direct sowing them into the bed. Now you can see I've got two different types of seeds here. I've got some larger bean seeds, these are a uh, bush bean variety and I also have some carrot seeds, very fine small seeds just like lettuce and um, some of the brassicas as well and some herbs. Uh, now believe it or not you can grow um, carrots in aquaponics. I've got some going at the moment and I've harvested a couple of crops before. Now due to the size of these guys you would sow them out differently than these bush beans. Now with the bush beans because they're a larger bean they tend to get lodged in the media and when the bed drains in a flood and drain bed style of system um, the beans will pretty much will stay put because they're trapped in the media. Now what I like to do is just dig a little hole and go down to the top of the water level and just pop the seed in and cover it up and I'm going to plant three out here. Same thing again down to the top of the water level where the uh, bed uh, high tide is so to speak and just pop these three seeds in and it's as easy as that. Um, the media on top will be hit by the sun nice and warm and it's also moist and those beans will be up in a matter of days. Now the finer seeds like these carrots and the lettuce and the others I mentioned before, some of these will get washed away as the bed floods and drains so I tend to be fairly generous with the amount that I put in. They are fairly cheap for the number that you get in the packet and I just like to sprinkle them on top of the media itself and then just give the media a bit of a tap and that settles the seeds down to that uh, moist layer of media which will help the seeds swell with water and then germinate. So if you're not subscribed and you want to see how these beans and carrots turn out, all you need to do is hit that little subscribe button down there and pound on the bell icon once it appears. And YouTube, fingers crossed, will send you notifications once the clips are uploaded to the channel. So there are plants like chilies, eggplants and tomatoes that have small seeds like this little Argy Amarillo. Thank you very much, Shui. Um, these guys here, you don't exactly want to broadcast through the bed. Um, nine times out of ten, just one or two plants are good enough. So if you don't want to start them off in a potting mix, you actually want to start them off in the aquaponics. You can get things like this little uh, peat pellet here. Uh, this is how they come, all dehydrated. Then you pop it in some water and they swell up like this. And then all you need to do is just pop your little seed in there and push them just under the top of the, um, the peat. In this case, it's a coconut fiber. And then what you do is just pop this down in the media until it just hits the water level like so and that's pretty much all right to go. It'll germinate over a couple of days and the beauty of starting them off like this is I could have a run of about five or six of them here and then as they germinate uh, before the roots make it through the outside of the pellet I can pick them up and move them somewhere else in the system or maybe even start them off in here and plant them out in the soil patch. So this is just another option. So you can also use these little things here, the little neck cups, um, pack them full with some rock wool or maybe some perlite uh, like I do with the hydroponics and start your seeds off in there, the small seeds like your peppers and whatnot, sink them down in the media, um, they get hydrated, the plant grows. Uh, I don't really like using these because these neck cups can be destroyed by the stalk of those larger plants as they grow. Uh, but these things are ideal uh, if you're growing in NFT or deep water culture. Basically nutrient film technique is a rail with holes in it. You pop these little cups in with the plants growing out of them and the water just trickles over the base, hydrates the media and the plant grows. And deep water culture, these just sit in the water itself very well oxygenated water and the plants grow. So um, that's something to keep in mind if you're using those styles of grow methods. So a little invention by a uh, well-known aquaponic YouTuber, Rob from Bigelow Brook Farm, is this little grow grip. I've sacrificed one of my little self-sown uh, lettuce over there. Well, what these are is a little foam grip that you pop your seedlings into once you've started them off, pull them down a little bit more. The uh, root protrudes down the bottom and you pop them in to your deep water culture boards or your NFT rails and away you go. You've got your plant growing through the top, it's foam so it can expand as the plant grows and the root sits down below in the water. So a, a fantastic idea. I would definitely suggest you check out Rob's channel by the way. He's a top bloke, great mate. Our link will be up there. Loads of DIY aquaponic stuff that may interest you folks. Now Rob is a very clever man and he's also come up with a very nifty little wicking bed cedar idea. 
I've got my version of it over there, but the link to Rob's, which is a standalone outside of the system, can be found in the description below. So basically what we have is a little takeaway tub with a series of holes drilled around the outside of it. And then into the tub itself, I've popped in a load of the small and slightly crushed clay that we have laying around. And I've dug it down into the bed so the water will enter into about halfway up the little tray itself. And then just sprinkled some seeds over the top, just like the small carrot seeds before. Give them a bit of a tap so they settle down into the water. And that's pretty much all it. And because it's dug down into the bed, just below the water line, as the bed fills up, the water fills the tray to about halfway, hydrates the media, and as you can see, it's a little bit moist as these um, little bits of clay will wick water up. The seeds will swell with the water, then germinate, and then all I need to do is pull out this whole little tray and then walk around the system wherever I want the seedlings, tease them out gently, and then pop them directly into the clay itself. So this is just a very easy way to start off a load of seeds in a very small compact space and yeah just using the natural um, flood and draining of the grow bed to um, keep them nice and hydrated. Now another way you can start off your seeds is by doing nothing and letting them self-seed the beds. We have a whole cluster of cos or romaine lettuce that have started off over there. I had a dear old grandmother of a lettuce over here. We cut um, the head off and one of the, it formed a little side shoot and it went to flower and it's just dropped seeds all through the beds and I've collected some as well. And that's what these guys are, um, all just um, volunteer plants. And that self-propagation method will probably be the easiest way to start off your seeds in the system because only the strongest will survive. Um, but as you can see, yeah, it does get a little bit crowded. So transplanting seedlings into the system would have to be the next easiest way to go. These are some that I've just started off in some seedling mix. You can buy a specialty seedling, seedling mix or I make my own. I just buy a good premium potting mix, just run it through the sieve, get all the large chunks out and then sow my seeds directly into that soil. And as you can see, it works out fairly well. Uh, these guys are a little bit long in the tooth and should have gone out last week or so, uh, but you know, that happens. But what I thought I'd do is just show you how easy it is to get these out of soil, whether you've shot them yourself or bought them at a nursery, and then get them into the grow bed. So I'll just walk you through my process quickly. Try not to hurt those little lettuce seedlings down there. But what I like to do is I like to dig out a little hole in the media that the seedlings will be going into first. Uh, a little bit of scrap pipe um, is absolutely perfect for this. Um, I'm actually using the same size pipe as I make the shrouds for the bell siphons. Just dig out a little bit of media and then I'll come over here to my starts. Just gently remove them from the cell they're sitting in. And as you can see, there's a load of little roots on there. And then over here, just give it a bit of a rinse. Today I'm washing it off in some water with some seaweed fertilizer in it. It's thought that the seaweed fertilizer acts as a bit of a tonic just to reduce transplant shock. And then once the majority of the soil is out, all you need to do is drop it down into this pipe, pull the pipe out, and then a backfill around it with your media. Pick out that little lettuce, and that's pretty much all it. I'll just run through it one more time. And just pop down the pipe here, empty out all the clay, come over to our seedlings, grab out another one, and give it a bit of a wash in the seaweed mix and then just pop it straight down so it is as easy as that so i'm going to put a third lot of seedlings in here now this time around i'll take this one up the end here because it's looking rather large just one plant by itself this little specimen here as you can see has a load of roots around the soil and it's pretty much all holding that soil together now i have found in previous plantings that if i just pop them in like that uh, bury them with some clay and get them established. When it's time to remove the plant later on, that little ball of soil will come out because the roots have grown all around it. Um, there are some people who try to get all the soil off all their seedlings. Um, I'm not overly concerned about it or fussed about it anymore. So just quickly, another time it is handy to wash out roots of plants is when you're dealing with things like this beetroot, um, which will quite often throw a couple of different seedlings from one seed pod because they are a cluster seed. So what you can do is get it in the little mix here, give it a bit of a swish around, and that helps to separate the roots. There we go. 
Now you need to try and be as delicate as possible. I've got a very small one there that I'm not going to worry about. There's a bit of a runt. Got this one here, just gently peel the roots off. There we go. And we have one we can pop in here. Lift him up and back fill around. And another one we can pop in virtually right next to him. Nice long root there to go all the way down. And we pull the pipe out and just backfill in around the beetroot itself. So it's as simple as that. So we're done with transplants and sowing seeds. Now I thought I'd give you a bit of a look at um, growing with cuttings. Over here we have a bit of an experiment. Um, these are all little bay cuttings. We've actually lost two, this one here and that one over there. Uh, Bianca pruned her bay tree a couple of months back and she decided to grow, uh, pop some tip growth into the aquaponics just to see how it goes. So uh, aquaponics is a great way to start um, little cuttings like this. I've actually grown mulberry trees from cuttings in the aquaponics before. Just popped in around about uh, an eight inch or 20 centimeter cutting into the aquaponic media itself. And within a matter of about uh, eight to 10 months, we ended up with a small tree we had to remove and pop into a root pouch to grow elsewhere. So uh, taking clones or cuttings is another fantastic way to start off plants in your aquaponics. Uh, we've done a few different varieties. Uh, this is an Okinawan spinach, uh, which is a plant from Southeast Asia, and it grows very easily from cuttings. These are two sections starting from cuttings. Now, just up the other end of this bed, we have another plant that's very easy to grow via cutting. You can also grow it by seed as well. This is Kangkong, also known as um, water spinach, Chinese water spinach, and Growing this stuff by cutting is as easy as taking off a tip like that. A bit hard to do one-handed, but I'll try my best. Knock off a couple of the leaves, and then just bury that down into the medium where the um, stalk will hit the water. And we'll end up with another clump like this, um, just cascading down the bed in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, now, this is a fantastic plant to grow just for its greens, for salads or stir-fries uh, for you folks in the warmer area, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, now, these plants over here, uh, not quite clones. What they are, they are little plants that we started off with store-bought cuttings. Uh, we keep an eye out for the green onions when they come up for sale. Um, they're starting to look a little bit manky and quite often you'll get a bunch for um, 50 cents at the, stupid mar at the supermarket. Um, so what we do is we bring them home and we use the whites and any greens that are any good. Now the phone's in focus. What we do is we chop off about a centimetre or just under half an inch of the base, keep the roots on, and then it's very, very easy to start these guys out. All you need to do is um, just push aside the clay, just bury them down like that and then pull them up. So that little cut ring is just above the surface of the media. I'll do it here with another one for you. Put your fingers around the roots, and then just push them down into the media bed and then backfill around it. And just make sure that top is above the, um, the media level and you're good to go. Now this one here was grown using that method. And as you can see, it's rather sizable, well and truly thicker than my finger there. And this is one that we harvested last week. I think I popped a photo up on the social media and you'll find that it um, re-sprouts pretty readily and you'll end up getting another harvest. So there we go, we got five new green onions in and pretty soon we'll be self-sufficient with cut and come again and green onions. And yeah, even if you do pay full price for these guys, this is a fantastic way to get the most bang for your buck. So as you can see, it is pretty easy to start off plants in your aquaponics, whether you're sowing directly or using seed starts like those ones there, or just popping in a couple of cuttings. Uh, for you folks who are new to the channel, and this is the first clip of ours you've seen, just like to let you know that we have a load of DIY aquaponic clips, everything from uh, building your own system, different DIY components you can build like the bell siphons, and also a couple of clips looking at different layout designs for your aquaponic system, if you wanna have a crack at knocking one together yourself from scratch. Uh, before I go, I would like to thank all you folks who turn up regularly, even you new folks who have come along today to check out the clip. Thank you very much, folks. It would be fantastic if you could thumb it up, share it around with your family and friends, and leave a comment down below, even if it's just to say good day. I'd really appreciate that. Special thanks needs to go to those awesome folks who are helping to support the channel through our Farm Your Own Yard member site, where members get um, exclusive content, and also the YouTube membership program as well. Thank you very much, folks, for continuing to support the channel. 
please check out the super contributors links to their websites and facebook pages are down in the description below i will leave it there though i've got to get some plants in before the sun sets do hope you're all well and happy and your aquaponics is booming and i'll catch you next clip cheers folks now have a top one